just want to be in the house. Hallelujah. The man that hears from God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it, it's, it's, it, and I know it's not my time to preach a possibility. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, we, you know, we're living in a time where people are not hearing from God and everybody wonder where the title of prophet and apostle and, and God has not called them. Come on. And they find themselves just finding prophecies and just telling people, amen, that it never come to pass. Amen. I'm so glad that God is raising up true men and women of yes, God, amen, amen, that are hearing him, amen, yes. for such a one as Apostle Raleigh, amen. amen. I have seen the glory of God only his amen. life, amen. amen. Hallelujah, and I tell you, it's nothing short of amazing, nothing short of him. I can't see nothing but God's glory when he stands, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I want you to stand to your feet. I'm not going to further the time. Just lift your hands, Father, I give you praise right now. We thank you, God, that the heavens are open tonight. We thank you for what you're about to do in and through the man of God. Father, let your oil begin to saturate this place in the name of Jesus. God, let a fresh fire invade this place, erupt this place like a volcano, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you release angels all around this place. God, in the name of Jesus, that lives will be changed, that even will be open, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that people will be healed at the sound of the voice of the man of God, in the name of Jesus. God, thank you, oh God, that this is the time and this is the season, God, that you're about to reveal yourself in a greater way, God. Take us to another dimension, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, our ears are open, our eyes are ready to see, oh God, with expectation of what you're about to do in the earth realm tonight, God. Father, I pray that as the man of God speak that all the Waco will be shaken God in the name of Jesus and that every unsaved person in this city in this region will be saved tonight in the name of Jesus that you would visit them give them that word tonight while they sleep in the name of Jesus and they will wake up glorify your name oh God I give you praise God as this prophetic word begin to go out in the name of Jesus we give you praise right now let the church say hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you excited to be in his presence tonight? I know we've been worshiping. Can you lift up your hands one more time? And just thank the Lord, just worship him tonight. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this place tonight. I thank you for what you're already doing. Lord, I just give you glory and honor. Just, just, I'm going to ask you now just to quiet your soul and just, just love him tonight.
place your hands over your heart. Father, tonight we thank you for what you're already doing. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power. We thank you that there's freedom to lift up your name. We thank you that chains have already been broken in this house. We thank you that yokes of oppression have already been removed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that your healing power is already moving in this place. Now, Lord, I pray tonight your kingdom come and your will be done in this place. Father, I ask, Lord, live tonight, live tomorrow. Lord, not because Voice of Jubilee is here, not because Pat Riley is here or, 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 or Prophet Randy or Bernie Bush, but because of your presence, because of your glory. Yes, yes. Father, I pray let Waco be changed. Lord, I pray let the river of God flow out of this place and into this city and bring change, God. Because, Lord, politics can't do it. Lord, politicians can't do it. Only your glory can do it, mighty God. And, Father, we declare that tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, give the Lord a big shout and give him a hand. Amen. And uh, I honor your pastor, Prophet Randy. How many love Prophet Randy tonight? Hallelujah! Mighty man of God. Mighty, mighty man of God. And I don't say that just to say it. I'm not saying it because he invited me either. Okay? Uh, he, he said, I wouldn't come if I didn't believe he wasn't a mighty man of God. And uh, prophet, thank you so much. And I call him prophet and not pastor because I want to put a demand on the anointing that's on his life. Yeah. You know, we have enough pastors. I'm sorry I say it like that. But we need to recognize the anointing and the mantle on each person. So we need to, we need to call it. See, there's a, we're living in a city. Thank you, Lord. We're living in a city that does not want to recognize yeah. even the mantle of God that's on this house. Come on, come on. You need to understand that. Um, Prophet, I'm just going to tell you what I feel like the Lord told me. Yes. And I, I got this word for you two weeks ago, and I said, Lord, should I call him or, or should I? Just, he took, the Lord said, the way. But what I saw, and, and you need to understand, as I prophesy to people and I do whatever the Lord tells me to do, yeah. I, I, I submit my, my prophetic anointing, my prophetic gift under the authority of the house. And if there's something that I say that's out of line, he has he has freedom to come up here and correct it. Okay, so uh, how, how many know I'm just a man? I, I, I make mistakes. Amen. But 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 prophet, this is what I heard, and the Lord talked to me about burning bush, and the Lord actually showed me within this place that there's a school of the prophets that's about to raise up. Ah. I literally saw, Jesus. and I saw that you were, and I actually saw you as a as Elijah standing before many sons and many daughters. For the Lord told me to tell you that there are many that are going to come and going to say their sons and say their daughters, but they're not. But the Lord says, I'm going to open your eyes and I'm going to cause you to see those that are true sons and true daughters. Hallelujah. And for the Lord would say, get ready because I've given you an assignment in this city. That's actually what I'm going to talk about tonight is our assignment. The Lord says, I'll give you an assignment in this city to raise up the prophetic voice. To raise up the prophetic trumpet. The Lord showed me out of this house, I actually saw a trumpet in the spirit coming out of this place. Burning bush, I'm telling you, the Lord has placed you here strategically to be a trumpet over this city and to break things over this place. You need to understand that. So, so I saw that. I, I, I'm telling you, there's going to be more than just services. I saw you, prophet, raising up sons and daughters and even others begging you, saying, will you please train me in the prophetic? Will you please train me in the prophetic? So get ready. I don't know if that bears witness with you or not, but, but I saw a school of the prophets being raised up in this place. Amen? Tonight, the Lord placed on my heart. I was back there. there there's a couple of things that's... Um, uh, in my spirit. Before I say that, I'm so where's my beautiful wife at? <laughs> Stand up, baby. Amen. She's my beautiful, beautiful wife. Oh, all my heart. Amen. And I love uh, also Voice of Jubilee that came with us tonight. Amen. I love Amen. Oh, my heart. Amen. And uh, this is good. Uh, um, I didn't. We didn't have any of the Spanish, only Spanish speaking crowd come tonight, so I can just speak in English tonight. So that's good. Uh, there's a couple of things that's actually been rolling around in my spirit uh, about what to do today. How many know that we don't need a sermon to, to, to scratch our ears? We need to hear what God's saying. Yeah. We need to hear what the Lord is, what the Lord is speaking. But uh, the but this afternoon when I was in my office getting ready for tonight, 
the Lord uh, told me to teach about what is true success in ministry. Mm. What, it mean, or what it truly means to be successful. Because there's many of us that we see people that are ministry. We might see them in TV. We might see them in a big church. We might see them in a small church. We might see them in different places. And the world says that's successful. But my question for you is, what are they doing in the spiritual realm? And what are they doing for the kingdom of God? See, we are not to evaluate ourselves about what we see with the physical eye. We are to evaluate ourselves by what we see in the spiritual realm. But what we see God doing. So let me give you the definition. The Lord gave me two definitions of success. I want you to hear this. The first de definition of success is to accomplish your purpose. Somebody say accomplish your purpose. Accomplish your purpose. Look at your neighbor and say you need to accomplish your purpose. You need to accomplish your purpose. Okay. That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. One thing, I, the reason why I, I, we're here tonight is because even in tonight and tomorrow there's a purpose. Amen. We're not here just to come and just have a great time, which we are. But there's a purpose. Amen. There's a divine reason why, why the Lord has even brought us here tonight. There's a purpose for a burning bush to be here. There's a purpose Amen. for a voice of jubilee to be in Waco. Yes. It's Amen. more than just us waking up one day and or Prophet Randy saying, you know what, I think I'm just going to go to Waco and start a church. No, no, no. There's a greater purpose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, we got too many. Is, is this being recorded? Good. We got too many <laughs> churches in Waco yes. that have no purpose. Yes. Okay, we got too many people just playing around that have no purpose. Yes. It's time that we understand our purpose. Somebody shout purpose. Yes. Right. right now. Now, the second definition of success, now watch this, is to attain popularity or profit. Whoa. To become to become popular. See, many people, that's what the world's view of success is. Right, right. And here's the problem. That spirit of popularity and of self-profit has eased its way into the house of God. Yes, and it has tainted the anointing yes. of the Lord. Yes. It is it is tainted and it's stained exactly what the Lord is trying to do. So the first thing we need to do tonight before we go deeper into the Word is that we need to examine our heart. Lord, am I, am I trying to accomplish your purpose? Or Lord, am I trying to attain my own popularity and my own profit? I've got news for you. And the Lord told me to speak this tonight. You need to understand the prophetic is not just for the people that's here. Yes. See, even as you're prophet, even as there's others that are prophets that are here, as you begin to prophesy to the spiritual, as you begin to prophesy, the word is not just for the people, but it's for the demonic powers over the city. Yes. Come on, yeah. And something begins to happen. So you need to understand, and I'm telling you, get ready. The Lord spoke to me this afternoon. We are coming to a time that those that are in, that, that those that are in ministry that are only there for their own popularity and their own profit, the Lord's about to remove them out of the way. And to accomplish the purpose of God are about to be lifted up. It's about His kingdom and it's not about us. It's about His purposes, it's not about our purposes. It's about His glory and not man's glory. It's about His kingdom being expanded all over Waco, Texas and not what man wants to do. Somebody help me tonight. That's what success is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to examine our hearts. We need to examine our heart. If we are in the ministry for the wrong reasons, quit and go get a job. If you are trying to be a preacher for the wrong reason, go do something else. If you're not trying to lift up the kingdom of God, you have no reason to be in the pulpit. But if you're here to exalt the name of Jesus, to see people's lives change, to see Waco change, then that's the kind of heart that God is lifting up in these days. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk, give you some keys tonight about how to understand what success is. And here's one thing I want you to understand what I'm doing tonight. You need to understand how powerful this meeting is tonight. Because there's two anointings in the house. The apostolic and the prophetic have come together tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ephesians says that that is the, 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 that is the foundation of the church. Watch it, watch it. See, the religious people teach, well... And don't get mad at me. Jesus is the foundation of the church. Jesus is not the foundation of the church. The apostles and the prophets are the foundations of the church. But Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Of the yes. 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 So we need to get some things right. So here's what you need to understand tonight. Tonight, we're doing something in the spiritual realm. And uh, 
when, when the Bible talks in the book of Ephesians about the, the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. that they've come to equip the saints, mm -hmm. that word equipping is the Greek word karaditsu, which actually means how many have ever been to a chiropractor? Okay. What does a chiropractor do? He gets bones that are out of alignment and he places it in alignment. Yes. Now watch this. Why has there been so much mess in the body of Christ lately? Come on, Why has there been so much pain in the body of Christ? We've got some bones in the body that are out of alignment. Come on. And God is lifting up apostles and prophets to come in. And you get it back into alignment. Yes. See, the reason why the church has been weak is because we've been out of alignment. Yes. What is true alignment? Psalms 133. Uh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For it is like the precious oil. Somebody say oil. oil. And what does it say about this oil? It is poured down. It starts at the head. And somebody say the head. Okay, now watch this. If you are not aligned with your headship, you're not going to get the oil. If you're not if you're not aligned with the leader that God has given you, you're in a mixture of anointing. I'm sick and tired of people saying, "Well, I've got my own anointing." No, you can't get your own anointing. I'm trying to get my own. You know, you can't get your own authority. That's a lawless, perverted authority. You're trying to get under. No, those that are aligned with headship. Why do you think there's so many people in Waco? Yeah, I said in Waco. I'm glad you're recording this. There's so many people in Waco that are jumping from church to church to church to yes. church to church. Yes. Yes. Why? Because the enemy is trying to get us out of alignment. Yes. And they don't understand that they're missing the, 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 the power and the authority that God has. Okay? Now, who? hallelujah. Don't got a lot on the inside of me. But I'll be alright though. Now, how do we know success? How can we know what success are? I want to give you some, some keys that I didn't just teach. Y'all with me tonight? Yeah. Now, watch this. Number one. The first way to have success in ministry is, number one, we need to know who we are. That's it. Yeah. That's the yeah. It doesn't matter if anybody else knows who you are. You need to know who you are. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Do you remember in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, when Jesus was baptized in, in, in the Jordan, the Bible says that the heavens opened up and then God the Father said from the heavenlies, yes. what did he say? He said, this yes. is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes. Now, isn't it an amazing? Okay, so, so what, what did God do? God established the identity of his son. Yes. Now, you need to understand your identity is not in who man says you are. Your identity is in who God says you are. Yes. Yes. Okay, you need to understand that. It doesn't matter if anybody else recognizes it. I, I, when I first started ministering, and, and even when I first started Voice of Jubilee, me and my wife, I went through a season where I took everything personal. I've learned and I matured towards me. It's not, it has nothing to do about me. Yes, yes. It has nothing to do. It, 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 it's the spirit that, that, that's happened. So, so it doesn't. See, here's what you said. If people do not recognize the mantle on your life, it is their loss and not yours. Yes. Ah. If people do not recognize who you are, they are they they're not they're gonna not be able to receive from the anointing that's upon your life. So it's okay. Only those that can recognize who you are. That's why I said, Prophet Randy, I want to recognize that I recognize his authority. And nobody else does, I'm gonna receive and I'm gonna squeeze that anointing and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get everything I can out of him as long as I'm here in the house. See that? I, in other words, I'm, see, we need to learn how to put a demand on the anointing. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, so, uh, so we must we must recognize who we are. Now, isn't it amazing that in Matthew chapter four, when 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 Jesus was led to the desert to be tempted by the enemy, the first thing the enemy did, he said, "If you be the Son of God, yes. isn't that amazing?" First, he said. I mean, now, now, don't you think he heard the announcement from heaven when God says, this is my beloved son? Now, now here's what you need to understand. The devil do everything he can mm -hmm. to try to get you confused about what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Burning bush, voice of jubilee, we have got to stay focused and we have got to know who our identity is. Yes. We've got yes. to know the anointing of God. That is part of our sign. That is part of our success.
As long as we stay focused and we know who we are, we cannot be moved. The devil cannot shake us. Yeah. It doesn't matter Hallelujah. if people do not recognize that we continue to go forward. It doesn't yeah. matter if people do not receive from the anointing and the deposits and the impartation Watch that's it. in your life. Right. You continue to go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. We need yeah. to understand that we are, and we say this in the spirit realm, we are an apostolic prophetic people here yeah. to extend the kingdom of God in Waco, yeah. Texas, yeah. to see things change in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you know who you are today? Yes. Let me see your hand if you know who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Satan's goal is to get you to question your identity. Well, God, Lord, I feel like I'm called to the prophetic, Lord, but, but Lord, I... So-and-so called me this, or, or Lord, I, I tried this and it didn't work. Lord, am I really a prophet? Lord, am I really an apostle? Lord, am I really a pastor? Listen, the enemy do everything he can to try to get you to question who you are. Know who you are tonight. Amen? Now, the second thing I want to share with you tonight.